Hello everyone, welcome back. The last video I did, I don't think it was the last video that went up, but the last video I did that was this theme did really really well, well it did well for someone that hasn't been on YouTube for a long time and has um, pretty much seen like the death of their channel. People seem to really enjoy uh, me talking about books. I did a best and worst books I read in 2020 if you haven't already read that. <laughs> if you haven't already watched that, watch it now please, that would be fantastic. If you want to, obviously, you don't have to if you don't want to. I thought I would carry on that kind of vibe um, and I definitely do want to do more bookish stuff on the channel so there will be more videos like this. Today I'm going to be doing a current favourite books video. I was going to be a top five but I have six so it's like my favourite six books at the moment. My favourite books kind of chop and change depending on when I read new things or when something I did used to really like uh, like sort of becomes less relevant to my life or something, I, you know, I read other things. I've had a lot of favourite books over the time but uh, and some of these have been like long-standing favourite books um, but there's a good mix in here of sort of uh, middle grade books, so like 9 to 12 year old um, reading, and then classics, and then sort of, you know, I don't know, everything in between. See, and as well, something to, to preface this with, which I feel like I say at the uh, beginning of every video, but these are my favourite books that I have currently with me in London now. I have the majority of my book collection back at my parents' house because there just wasn't the space to be able to move it to London with me. Um, so these are the favourite books that, like, upon looking on my bookcase here, were my favourite books. I think there's others, especially more um, young adult fiction books, which I would consider up there with my favourite books, which I just don't have here with me, so that's why there's like a massive gap where I think I don't really have any YA books in this collection. Before I go on, it's time for Mug of the Day. So today's Mug of the Day, I've got a nice coffee in it because uh, it is one o'clock and um, I've had a bit of a busy morning. It's actually, it's quite a cool mug. I think I got it from Premark many, many years ago now, and it has like the tea leaf image of the Grimm from Harry Potter, and on the back it says, my dear, you have the Grimm, and I have a little saucer that goes with it, which I don't have up with me up here with me right now, but it, it's a really cool mug, and I like it a lot. It's the perfect coffee size mug. I only started drinking coffee in the last few years, and I only recently, for Christmas, got a coffee machine, so this is the only mug that's really coffee appropriate at the moment. We've got that out of the way. Let's just jump straight in. Actually, before I talk about the books, I just wanted to quickly say as a personal achievement. So I've wanted to write a middle grade book for a very long time and actually in the last week I finished my first draft of, of my middle grade book and so I'm hoping, I've, I'm now like two drafts in and I'm hoping to sort of be pitching maybe to some publishers um, come late February, early March. That's my goal. I If it was up to me, which I guess it is up to me, I would like to just start pitching now but I know that like I need to keep editing and you know make sure my synopsis sounds really good and stuff so I'm trying to pace myself and not get too ahead of myself and too excited because you know maybe no one wants to pick it up but um, actually it leads me quite nicely into the first book I want to talk about, my middle grade book uh, which is 9 to 12 year olds literature. Um, I wanted to have a main character, a protagonist who is, uh, well who has a chronic illness like me, Crohn's disease and I feel like Although I didn't get diagnosed till I was, I think, 16, I would have loved to have read a book that focused on a disabled or chronically sick protagonist where their disability or their illness wasn't the whole focus of the storyline. There was other really cool storylines happening around it, but it didn't shy away from the fact that they, um, you know, that was a part of their lives. And also to show that, you know, those people can be protagonists of really cool adventure stories. Um, and a story that has really inspired me recently with that in mind is A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol. Her new book, um, Show Us Who You Are, which is coming out in March, I believe, which I've already pre-ordered. Elle McNichol, this is her debut book. And honestly, I read it all in one sitting and I just sobbed the whole way through. Um, it follows a character called Addie who is autistic and it's written from sort of her perspective. And it's so insightful that I'm neurotypical. I don't know what it's like to live inside, um, you know, the life and world of um, an autistic person but this book is just I feel like if I was a kid or even now reading it it's just such a wonderful insight and it helps you understand and it really sort of shows you what um, people go up against every single day and sort of how people's prejudices and stigmas still carry even now when you think that like you know we're in an age of mass education and um, awareness surrounding um, disabilities and chronic illnesses and there's still just such a long way to go particularly in literature and in terms of representation like I can imagine like for young autistic people seeing themselves represented as such a wonderful strong funny character would be fantastic and so with that in mind um i it was weird because i sort of was rededicating myself to writing i have followed um l on 
Twitter, I think seeing from through her publisher, and I saw this come out and I, I, I ordered it and read it. And it was so weird because I was just like so, um, it really inspired me to keep going because for a long time, you know, my story that I'm writing at the moment focuses around, yeah, like I said, a young girl with a chronic illness. It's not about her illness, it's about this crazy cool adventure she has, you know, surrounded by Greek mythology and, you know, loads of cool stuff. I think it's a really fun and exciting book, um, but it's exactly the kind of story I'd have loved to read um, at 11 and the kind of story I'd like to give to other young people who have, like, chronic illnesses like me um, to read and see themselves represented as, like, a really cool protagonist that gets to go on cool adventures. And so when I, I read this sort of midway through my um, sort of process and was just like wow okay because there's so many times where I'd thought no one's going to want to publish this book like no one's going to want to read a book like the one I'm writing because I just haven't seen you know you hardly you know when you see a protagonist of an adventure story they're always doing these crazy stuff they're going like you know I've got to run they've got to fight they've got to do these things and I wanted to write about a girl that manages to do these adventures in other ways and so reading kind of spark was just like a light bulb moment for me because it made me realize that actually there are publishers out there that will publish books like that and also books you know with a protagonist that might not be neurotypical in the case of a kind of spark or a, a protagonist that might have chronic illness in terms of my book um they can be f fantastic protagonists and um you know incredible incredible characters and yes that was a big inspiration for me that's why a kind of spark is up there with my favorite books at the moment i would highly highly recommend it um Elle McNichol is actually doing a YouTube series at the moment for um, like kind of how a step-by-step -step guide on how to write your own book. It's aimed at a slightly younger audience, but I've been watching the videos because I think they're really helpful. Um, and I just think she's a fantastic role model and just an excellent writer. This book has um, been like, you know, super, super popular. It's topped um, like best, best lists of 2020 because I think it came out late last year. Um, and completely well deserved. It's fantastic. And I think books like this and um, Elton X book shows who are, are going to be um, just massive, massive milestones and they're going to pave the way forward for more inclusive children's literature. And that's very exciting for me as a person that is, is, right, is trying to write inclusive children's literature. Fantastic. Really would highly recommend. Couldn't recommend it more. On to my next uh, top 10. Top 10? This isn't a top 10. My next favourite book. Is, I'm gonna go with this actually because it kind of yeah. Uh, so to completely sort of juxtapose, juxtapose. That's so not a word. Completely contrast the the last book. This is obviously a very very old book, not a new book. This is the Odyssey by Homer. Um, and obviously you can tell my copy is incredibly battered and bruised because this is the copy I used to study uh, when I was doing my A-levels in classics. Um, but I do have a very nice edition of this somewhere on my shelf that isn't as abused as this one. Um, but I love the Odyssey. I obviously am a big fan of classics and of ancient history and of classical literature, but I also f uh, completely appreciate that some people don't like classical literature or find it very difficult to get into because of the language, which is why I would suggest to anyone, if you're interested in like, you know, going right back <laughs> to, you know, epic poems. Um, this, the Odyssey is a com is an easy read uh, in terms of like comparatively to other classics. If you compare it to the Iliad even, I think the Iliad is harder to read than the Odyssey, which is why I'd always recommend reading the Odyssey first, even though technically in terms of chronology, the Iliad happens before the Odyssey. The Odyssey, and particularly, I really like the translation, the Penguin edition. I think it's so simple to follow and for me that's what I look for because I am I'm intimidated by reading classical literature by the language a lot of the time because it I don't know it's just intimidating when you feel like you're really struggling to understand and it's a massive effort to sort of get through the story but I like the Odyssey because of that but I also like it because it's a completely timeless story and I think it's part of what I love about a lot of classical literature and um, particularly in the Odyssey and the Iliad and even the mythology surrounding the Greeks their stories, the reason they're so powerful and they still resonate today is because we've had the same problems, the same trials, the same tribulations, the same, you know, scenarios happening in our day-to-day -day life now uh, as what they were dealing with back, you know, a couple thousand years ago. I think it's a real, like, testament to, like, the human nature and the human condition and how, you know, all of this time can change and we can develop so much technology, but really people are people and you know, there's, <laughs> I agree with mythology particularly, um, and even, you know, the Odyssey and stuff, they're filled with all of the things that you'd want from a story, you know, you've got love, um, and these, like, romances and stuff, where you're grieving wives, missing husbands, you've got war, you've got, um, adventure, you've got monsters, and I think this book does it fantastically. Obviously, 
a lot of the time sometimes when you study a book it can take the enjoyment out of it a little bit but I fell in love with the Odyssey through studying it although now I read it for my own enjoyment whether it's you know when I was taking my classics exam if you'd asked me then you know would I read the Odyssey for enjoyment I probably would have said no because I was very stressed and taking my A1 and A2 in one year with the classics so you know that's a that's a whole different thing but yeah I highly recommend the Odyssey if you want something to ease you into that world because I think it's the easiest read out of all of them and it's a story that is incredibly powerful and really fun and you know there's a lot of humour in it as well which is something I love. Kind of on the same vein as that, I talked about this in my last video about books so I won't go on about it now but that's Mythos by Stephen Fry. This I listened to on audiobook but I do have the physical copy to um, fault it to be honest. In terms of being similar to the Odyssey it's an easy read obviously this is like modern retellings but not set in modern times it's still classical you know era setting but it's just told in a way that's really accessible I think it's fantastic I don't think I've ever seen a more comprehensive guide to the, the myths and like the creation of the universe according to the Greek Greek mythology and so in <laughs> In terms of that, I could just, I don't think there's anything, like, you know, there's a few different collections of Greek mythology and stuff, but I think in terms of absolute comprehensiveness and, um, you know, you can tell so much research has gone into it in a way that it accumulates a lot of the existing myths that might have contradictory outcomes or top contradictory moments, they kind of are all accumulated into this, which I think is really, really smart, so would highly recommend by the same author and that is Patrick Ness. I've talked about Patrick Ness a million times on this channel I feel like. Maybe I did used to do book content or maybe I just used to put it on Instagram a lot. I don't know I feel like I've said Patrick Ness's name a lot on this channel even though I thought I'd never really done book content. I don't know maybe I need to go back through my old content and have a look at what the hell I've been doing the last I don't know five years. I'll start with the monster calls because I actually would say this is probably my favourite book of all time when it came down to it. Like if I someone was like you have to tell me your favourite book of all time it would be this and I think it's because it has all of the elements that I love in a story. It's heartbreaking for one thing, it like really just tears you apart. Like I just cried the whole way through this, I cried the whole way through watching the stage show which is uh, one of my favourite plays of all time. The adaptation of this to stage is flawless, like I couldn't get over it, it was fantastic and I absolutely adored the film as well. I think it is one of the very rare things that exists in you know now three different mediums and each one is perfect in their own right love it couldn't fault it it has everything it's got like the mixture between fantasy and real world like i don't know surroundings real world the whole story is sort of half fantasy half real world and that's something i love and it's something that like i've incorporated into, into my own book it's a like half fantasy half real world and so that's something that patrick ness does almost consistently throughout all of his books. Uh, in fact, The Rest of Us Just Live Here is, is a fantastic book, which I don't have with me here, and it's also by Patrick Ness, and it kind of focuses around all of the people living in these like worlds where all of the action and stories happening in these fantasy novels are happening around them, but they're just the normal people living their everyday lives and having to deal with like the aftermath of everything. Fantastic, really great book, and sort of epitomises what I think Patrick Ness style, and that is like sort of switching between fantasy and reality. I think it's fantastic. Also the whole like story surrounding the creation of this book is I think really interesting and also just really really sad. Obviously this book was sort of the idea and the story was created by Siobhan Dowd and then she sadly passed away of cancer and Patrick Ness picked it up and carried on the story and finished it and you know turned it into this and I think that that's like really I don't know it's a very unique situation and I think Patrick Ness did an absolutely beautiful job of that and I think uh, yeah I just think it's something to note as well because it really adds to the, you know the whole I don't know especially with the subject matter of the of the story like this is a story about a person with cancer as well um and so I think that adds this extra element which makes the story even more powerful. He writes this beautiful forward and so you know talks about passing on a baton and how he didn't want to mimic her voice but he you know got that feeling that itch of wanting to continue this story wanting to write the story um and you know, I love that he, a quote I'm going to read from this as well, is he said, I feel, I felt and feel as if I'd been handed a baton, like a particularly fine writer had given me her story and said, go, run with it, make trouble. So that's what I tried to do. Um, so yeah, I think he did fantastically with it. And uh, I just think that that adds an extra sort of, I don't know, it really surrounds the story in this like deep love. And you can tell that so much um, heart went into the story in order to make it the best it could be you know, to honour her and the fantastic idea she'd come up with and obviously all of her previous writing, which is um, amazing. Thing by Patrick Ness, which I, like, I was debating putting this in here because having reread it, 
semi recently. I actually don't know if I read it last year or the year before I reread it. Um, this used to be my favourite book of all time when I first read it and that was because it was just so filled with twists and turns that I didn't see coming, the story was really fresh, the idea was really new. Again it was that thing that started in reality almost and then turned into a sort of dystopia and you weren't really sure what was going on and you never found anything out until the end and it still does leave you on a massive cliffhanger which I, and, and which I usually I would be like so frustrated by but in the case of this it really really worked so I always said this was my favorite book because also it's just incredibly well well written Patrick Ness has a really unique and fantastic style to his writing that I just really enjoy it really vibes with me I get on really well with it I enjoy reading it um but when I reread it I still very much enjoyed it but I didn't hit me the same way but that's purely because I'd already I already knew what all the twists and turns were so I think it kind of is a one read book this which is not something I say frequently because I'm a big fan of rereading I I would say this is probably you get the most out of it the first time you read it maybe I don't know maybe you'll reread it again and you'll be like oh there's loads of cool stuff to find and you know that's cool too but for me it was a fantastic and it's still one of my favorite books but yeah very powerful on the first read and if you like sort of dystopia futuristic things with really strong characters and a really compelling and interesting story and very compelling um sort of structure i think that that's what Steve, well i think that's what patrick ness does really well in his books the structure of his books is just absolutely impeccable like they really it really keeps you on your toes but keeps you completely engaged and feels very smooth final book which is again actually one I've only read once. Maybe that's why they're in my favourite book category because I haven't had the time to read them again and then sort of pull stuff out of them that I didn't like. But, and that was the picture of uh, Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I really like Oscar Wilde, obviously. <laughs> like, fantastic uh, writer. Uh, and I think obviously a lot of people that enjoy classic literature are gonna sing Oscar Wilde's praises. So I'm not gonna sit here and talk about why he's fantastic and all of that stuff as well. But I think Dorian Gray is one of my favourite books because I think like the time of my life I read it and also I don't know just everything that was happening at, at that time it, it kind of like I don't know it got me into reading again the last time I had like a reading slump like I'm back into reading now and obviously I had a bit of a reading slump throughout 2020 but towards the sort of September time of 2019 was when I was starting to move to London and start my new job and all of that stuff and I decided I hadn't read all summer and I was like I need to start reading books again so I went into Waterstones and you can get these I think they're really nice editions of classic books they're paperback and they all look really nice on the shelf together I have quite a few of them and they're 5 99 which I for going into a bookshop a real bookshop and not buying things off Amazon because I don't buy my books off Amazon uh that I think that's very cheap and so I would go in maybe once a week after work or before work actually sorry um and I would pick up a new book and this was the first one I did in that tradition and I loved it. I had always heard of the story and I knew the story of Dorian Gray because it's obviously a very famous one but I'd never read it myself and I felt like I really wanted to sort of like you know finally read all of those like really really classical you know books that are renowned so I did and I loved it I thought the writing obviously I love the style of the writing that like goes without saying but I also thought the story was just really compelling and I it really stands the test of time and that's why it's still so popular obviously you don't need me to tell you that i can see why some people don't like it i think there's also like an equal amount of criticism for this story and stuff but i just found it really compelling and actually like i have a tattoo on my ankle i don't know if i can show you without like i'm wearing a dress so this is this is dorian he's a dementor um yeah i got dementor tattooed on me although most people think it's a ghost that's fine um i got that yeah, literally in 2019 now. So I've had it, I think I've just had it just over a year actually. So it was sort of like the end of 2019. Um, I've had it just over a year and I obviously got it when I just finished reading this book. And I was like, oh, Dorian the Dementor, that'd be a cool name. So I have a, a tattoo named after this this guy. So even though obviously Dorian is like not a good character and he's a villain, etc. But I still name my tattoo after him because it sounds like a cool name. Anyway, I feel like it was, um, a relatively easy read obviously it's not a particularly long book and I got through it quite quickly and I think that books like this are really um they're becoming a bit more accessible accessible for people who maybe haven't um delved into the world of you know some more, more classical literature before and so in in terms of that I think it's it's a, a relatively easy read and actually I ended up annotating quite a lot of this because there was some really standout lines to me let's see if I've got any underlined I'm gonna go through this is not a favorite quotes book uh, a favourite quotes video even, but I have um, I have underlined a few of my favourite quotes from this. Uh, the first one I can see is, laughter is, not a, laughter is not at all a bad beginning for a friendship, and it is by far the best ending for one. 
like that a lot. That's why I feel like when you're reading these books, people are always like, oh no, but they're hard to read, they're like inaccessible. But actually like, there are some really beautiful quotes um, throughout these books that I think are like, there's nothing about the language that makes them um, difficult to understand or difficult to read. And that's where I think you can really get something out of it. Um, another one that is underlined here is, the reason we all like to think so well of others is that we are all afraid for ourselves. The basis of optimism is sheer terror. Oscar Wilde, how you write that way. It's so cool to read books like this and see the phrasing and the words and everything because yeah, they are slightly different, but you can still just get so much out of them. And I feel like in a world of like, no offense to Instagram, like poetry accounts that do like, you know, your spaced out, like sort of your milk and honey style poetry, which I'm not a fan of, but if you are, that's fine. I personally, uh, I'm not a fan of it because I don't think it's particularly, um, artistic or takes um you know i don't know i don't want to be i uh, know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna roast it now because i'll probably do a separate video on poetry and stuff because i have a lot of opinions and strong feelings about it but if you like it fine that's cool but when you read stuff like that i'm like man cool lines really well crafted and really um <sighs> words well chosen to to really sort of i don't know pop the world in order and describe things and you know facets of the human life in a way that's really articulate and beautiful to read i think that that's fantastic and this big inspiration for me and my writing style and how i would like to be able to write okay i was about to film an outro but um my, my our house's little doggy tasmin has decided to come and that was a loud snort she decided to come and come and chill with me for the rest of this i uh, just feel a bit lonely because everyone else has gone out Are you okay you gonna sit down? That are, the, that are, wow. God, I promise my writing in my book is better than that. Those were my, and are my favorite books of the current moment, subject to change. I obviously, yeah, they're just some books I'm really enjoying at the moment and would recommend. So do leave me any other book video themed, sorry, the camera's shaking at Taz is, um, you know, moving around. Yeah, that's kind of my things. <laughs> I feel like I've not been able to speak this this video, but um, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, please leave me any other book themed video suggestions or non book themed video suggestions in the comments. I would love to read them and love to put some things up that you guys would enjoy. And I hope you're enjoying this new style content on my channel. Obviously, I have <laughs> obviously a lot of people have left. That's fine. But now the people who have stayed, hopefully I'm going to be doing content that you guys really, really enjoy. And well, oh, I'm, I've just spilled coffee all down me. Cool. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye.